folks, Mobile Giza back at you. And yes, I'm not wearing a hat, which I know you haven't seen before. And I'm wearing my glasses because I wanted to use my notes to give you my impressions of what's been going on at MWC in Barcelona. It's not over yet. But uh, if there are any more major highlights, I may just make another video. But I think the heavy hitters are pretty much showing off what they're going to show off. So I wanted to tell you what impressed me and uh, what I'm thinking about and then get your thoughts in the comments. So on Sunday, of course, we had uh, LG and they announced the LG G6. They actually called it G6 Day. And uh, I have to say, from what I heard so far for phones, that's the one that's gotten me excited the most. Now, personally, I haven't had an LG phone since 2004. So I'm kind of excited to try this one out. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on it. Of course, it all depends on when I can afford what. Yes, the Galaxy S8 is not out yet, and that won't be till next month. But right now, I'm kind of setting my sights on the G6. So it's got the Snapdragon 821 processor, not the 835, because you can't have that if you release this early. And it does have an 18.9 aspect ratio with a 5.7 inch display. So. It's a little taller than other phones, but it's got IP68 water resistance. It's got wireless charging, which I haven't had a phone that has wireless charging yet either. So all in all, I'm kind of excited for that. The funny thing is it's got Gorilla Glass 5 on one side and Gorilla Glass 3 in front. It's got a 3300 milliamp battery, so it should be pretty much a battery king. So moving on to Samsung, same day they announced the Galaxy Tab S3 and the Galaxy Book with the S Pen. So you may be excited for that. I'm not looking to get a tablet or anything like that. So that doesn't excite me very much. But the S8 Unpack launch event will be on March 29th in New York City. I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to afford that anyway, so we'll see what happens. Motorola, of course, announced the Moto G5 and the G5 Plus. G5 has a Snapdragon 430 5.5 inch display. The G5 Plus has a Snapdragon 625 with a 5.2 inch display HD screen. And I know Jay Williams always says how great that 625 processor is. So that's something you may want to look into. Now Huawei announced the P10 and the P10 Plus. Well, I have the Huawei Mate 9, a phone I absolutely am in love with. It's still one of my daily drivers, along with the one I'm recording on right now, which is the ZTE Blade V8 Pro front-facing camera. But anyway, if you're interested in the Huawei P10 and the P10 Plus, you might be excited for that. They also introduce the Huawei Watch 2 and Watch 2 Classic. Uh, we'll see how that goes for me later on in the year. Then there was Nokia, who is now owned by HMD. And they trying to bring back Nokia with some mid-range phones and the classic 3310. Uh, it just looks like the old 3310. I'm not excited about it at all, but some people may be. I know Michael Fisher got pretty excited about it. Moving on, there was Sony, and they announced the Sony Xperia XZ Premium, the Xperia XA1, and the XA1 Ultra. Now, the XA1 and XA1 Ultra are probably more mid-ranges, but the XZ Premium sounds pretty good. It's got a Snapdragon 835, the latest and greatest. 
It's got a 4K display and it's HDR enabled with four gigs of RAM. So down the line, I may be interested in that. Maybe you are too. Then ZTE announced the Blade V8 Mini and the Blade V8 Lite. Now this is the Blade V8 Pro that I'm recording on, but the Mini and the Lite are coming out and I don't think either one of them are coming to the US. We'll have to wait and see. They also introduced their first smartwatch, the ZTE Quartz. And finally, they announced the ZTE Gigabyte, the first 5G phone. It sounds exciting, don't know the specs, but it seems to me this is still a concept phone. I'm not even sure if it'll get to production, but we'll have to wait and see. And finally, of course, there was BlackBerry with the BlackBerry Q1. A lot of people are excited for it. I know Jay Williams loves his BlackBerry. I've never had a BlackBerry yet, but BlackBerry is saying it's more for enterprise users, so they're justifying a pretty high price. I forgot off the top of my head what that price was, but it sounded too high for what they're offering. Others seem to agree. But it does have a 3505 battery, of course, the beloved physical keyboard, and a Snapdragon 625 processor. If you're into BlackBerry, you may want to look into that. So right now, those are my highlights from MWC 2017. Let me know in the comments what you're excited about. And if there's more the rest of this week, I'll probably make another video to discuss that with you. Anyway, you got to see me, how I look with my hat off. It might look weird to you. I know it looks weird to me. So uh, just let me know in the comments what you think about everything. Talk to you later.